Let's take a look at a neat little USB-C charger for LIR series button cells. Now, you may have come across this, the classic CR2032. Now, that uh, is a non-rechargeable cell, the CR2032, but it does have a rechargeable equivalent, the LIR2032. The 2 uh, stands for 20 millimeters diameter, the 32 stands for 3.2 millimeters thick, and they do a whole range of sizes in them. This charger is not suitable for the ML series, if you can see that on this. It's an ML2032. Sadly, it's very hard finding a charge for this type. It's just the LIR series, but it does cover all the different sizes they do. So if we take a look at this, it's a very neat design. It has a little lifting ramp here. It's got the common negative connection at the bottom. It's got the spring-loaded positive connection at the top. And if I grab a... USB-C lead and plug it into it. It's lighting up green to show it's in its standby state and because I can't find an LIR2032 cell, I'll put in one of these ML ones, even though I said they're not suitable, and left long enough it would overcharge it, but at this level it's uh, just showing that it's gone red and if it was an LIR2032, it would go green once it's fully charged. And I have tested the current, it charges about 10 milliamps. Okay. You've seen that. Oh, note, it's got the little three dots. They do that so much. There's only one LED as far as I can see under this. So let's open this. Now, you may see that it's slightly prized apart. That's because I thought, let's explore it. And then I decided not to when it made loud cracking noises. So I decided to stop at that point and start making the video before I broke it completely. So it is partially disassembled. Let's see if I can break it the rest of the way. So it has clips. Oh, there's the one I've broken. That's annoying. Don't open yours. They break. And let's uh, slip this down here. And there. Oh, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? Okay. Right. So it looks like it might have the classic LTH7 type chip there. These springs will be for the spring contact. Well, that's quite neat that they're the, they conduct onto that metal plate as well as actually providing the springiness. And there's a little foam pad. I'm not sure what the foam pad's for. What's in the vicinity of the LED? Oh, it's just covering the LED. It's a light guide, so the whole thing doesn't just light up in a splash. Okay, well, you know the script here. I'll take a picture and we'll explore the circuitry. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. So the chip here has a very odd numbering on it. It says 67B508. I'm guessing that's just a manufacturer's code, but it's a very classic charge chip like the LTH7, but this one is, seems to be optimized for charging small cells with uh, reverse polarity protection and uh, super low risk of discharge of the cell if you actually unplug the USB power supply while the, cell, the cell's still in it pleasingly. The USB-C port does have the two identification resistors, 5.1K, which tell it that it is a load and means that smart power supplies will actually send power out to it. Um, the risk is that if you plug them, if it doesn't have this and you plug it into a standard modern USB charger with sort of intelligent charging, it may not recognize as a load and it may not put power to it. But th in this case, it will do that. Then it's got a filter on the input and the positive, which is quite odd to see. 2.2 ohm and a capacitor, a little sort of snubber network, and then it feeds a chip with another capacitor local to the chip. It's got a 62K programming resistor for the current that's used to charge the cell, which is quite a high value, but it is just very low current for these cells. And then it's got the output with the capacitor going to the springs here, and then a 1K resistor for the LED, which actually has two pins for driving each individual LED charging and charged. Let me show you the schematic. At this point, I will also mention that you have to remember that although LIR2032 cells are size compatible with CR2032 cells, when fully charged up, their voltage is 4.2 volts, and that may be too much for some stuff. That's when uh, this cell, the uh, ML2032, would be better, but it's so hard finding the proper chargers for these. So many companies just ship out these standard LIR2032 chargers, and they're not totally compatible. But anyway, 
I digress slightly. Here's the USB supply come in. It's got its two uh, control resistors, the 5.1K, which tell it that it is a load and to send power out. There's a little snubber network, 2.2 ohm in series of the capacitor, which is a textbook design. That's good. And then another capacitor for decoupling. There's a 1K resistor for the two LEDs, which I haven't drawn the little pointy arrows on. I shall draw the pointy arrows on right now. And they are pulled low by this chip to indicate either charging or charged. There is the resistor which goes to the zero volt rail, 62K. That seems high. I'm actually double checking that, but that is the value. Uh, and then we've got a little decoupling capacitor and output and then the lithium cell itself. That is it. It's a very straightforward circuit. It's a very classic circuit, but a very nice implementation, such a, a small package. And I like the fact that the spring-loaded mechanism here that you can sort of lever up and down means that you can just stuff quite a range of sizes of these uh, rechargeable lithium cells underneath and it will clamp them down with a uh, reasonable force to charge them. Very nice. And likewise, when you want to get them out, you just basically push the button and then just dunk them out. That's very neat. But there we have it. Uh, the little dinky charger. I got it from AliExpress. It's available in black or white, but not pink. And uh, I shall provide a link to it just in case you have a need for rechargeable LIR 2032 cells.